Good evening, ladies and gents. Welcome back to EVE Online. Now, some of you may have heard about the battle out in BTAC R, or BTAC, B, BTAC 5, as some news reports, places are reporting it. I do believe they're wrong. This is BTAC R5RB. They're missing a digit. Anywho, we're already up to 12. So, we're bringing you to EVE Online. We're now bringing it in 1080p. It's so pretty, and all the graphics are all the way up, and it's a pretty game. Anywho, what we would like to discuss is, so you've heard of this battle in Nullsec. Now, there are certain prerequisites to living in Nullsec. Um, we're going to try to go through it and help to prepare you guys, at least in the initial stages, to be able to get out there, whether you haven't even started the game yet, or you have started the game, or you've been playing for, like, you've started the game and played for a little bit, or you've been playing the game for years, but you've been playing in high sec the whole time. Uh, if that last one's true, I'm sorry, you're a Care Bear, and everyone in Nullsec makes fun of you. But... That's not that's nothing to be ashamed about. But anyway, we would like to start this series to help you guys get into Nullsec. Now, some of the one of the eh, some of the big places we can start for these for you guys who are not yet started or who have just barely started, work the tutorial. The tutorial, the current tutorial actually does a pretty good job at least getting you to know how to maneuver your ship around to a basic sense. Unless you actually play the game, really. Uh, for those who might be more experienced or have already run the tutorial. Uh, do run the tutorial all the way through. Uh, you get free ships at the end. They're worth quite a bit of money. This destroyer I'm in right now, I can't, I think I, you get the other version of the destroyer, but they're worth about a million isk each, and that's two or three missions, maybe even four or five, depending on level of mission. Now, the big, the first really big requirement you're going to look at is isk. You're going to need to have enough money in order in which to s sustain yourself for a little bit while you're out there. Now this isn't like, woo, we've got 10 million isk, that's plenty enough. No, this is like two or 300 million isk, which you're going to be looking at to go out and start. And this is kind of the reserve you want to keep with you the whole time. Um, and get larger depending on what kind of ships you're flying. Some ship fits are 300 million by themselves, some are seven, 800, some are several billion isk if you get to capitals, or faction, I mean not faction, tech two battleships. Now, another big thing on here as um. You can use different ways you can create this isk in high sec. You can go missioning. You can go, because uh, once you get out of the trial, you can get to level 3, 4, and f even potentially 5. Though I don't hear of many people running five mission, level 5 missions. Um, level 3s and 4s, yes. Uh, especially level 4s. You'd be up in a battle cruiser or a battleship route running those. Maybe even like a faction battleship, you'd have to run them in those. And let's go look at those prices for those really quickly. They are not cheap. All right, so we're on cruises right now. We'll talk about that because that's really our next step we're taking here. Uh, a standard battleship. We'll, go st we'll stick with Amar since that's where our character is. Now, there's Armageddon, Apocalypse, and Abaddon for the Amar battleships. Now, they get their bonuses, and since the recent update, the bonuses is the only thing listed here as opposed to description, which description was kind of like, cool background story. The traits are what we want to see anyway. So, we're going to look here, and we can see the Abaddon gets 4% armor resist. That's a defensive trait. These other two don't have those defensive traits. It also gets 5% damage of its turns, large energy turns. This thing gets optimal range and tracking speed. A little more of a sniper kind of idea. Uh, just a little bit to where its bonuses go. You don't have to fit it that way, though it'd be, it'd be better suited towards that. The Armageddon gets 10% bonus drone hit points and damage, and energy vampire and energy neutralizer. That's a little more of a PvP uh, setup ship. Uh, energy vampires and neutralizers. That's really more of a PvP setup. We have the same similar fit on our... Our Dragoon here, we have two energy neutralizers up here, and we have various tackling ta uh, capabilities, and buffer tanks, and such things. And we use drones on our Dragoon. Our Dragoon is a drone boat. So is the Armageddon. It is one of the top two alongside the Dominix, which is a Galante uh, ship. And this is very much preferred in PvP because it gets 10% bonus to drone hit points and damage and 7.5% bonus to optimal range and tracking speed. The drones can shoot farther, hit more accurately, and they, when they do hit more accurately, they cause more damage, and also harder to kill, because they're being flown by that ship. This one only gets hit points and damage, they can't shoot quite as well. So, every ship has a niche. You're looking for the ship that's going to be filling your niche. Dominix is a very common ship to be flown in larger PvP, maybe not necessarily larger PvP, but certain PvP fleets. This is going to be something you want, might want to train towards, but we're not going to start here. That's not where you start. Example, requirements, 2 days, 20 hours. Cool, you can sit in it. You can't fly the guns. You can't fly the drones. You can't fly. You can't really fly effectively. Uh, you'd be blown up in an instant. If you go into the mastery and you get out to like 2 or 3 where they need you, it's like 40 days. 
get up to 475 days. And uh, we're not even going to... Okay, we'll look at five. 647 days. That's nearly two years to fly it perfectly. But you'll be able to fly a lot of ships similar to it very well once you have that experience. You're not going to get to Nullsec quickly, I will say. What you're going to be looking at doing is what can you do? Oh, we're going to look at the faction bounces, weren't we? Uh, we'll look at the... Megathron is a common one. We'll just look at the Megathron. What are the prices on a Megathron? Oh, oh, 600 million isk. Oh, that's just the ship minus the guns. And you get even worse. You get to Martyrs, which are even better built for this. And you go to the Kronos, which is a billion isk. Not cheap by any means. So, sorry to rain your parade. 10 million isk, or, you know, 17 million isk. Where did we get 17 million isk from? Where are we getting 10 million isk or something? Oh, well. Journal. Have you seen here? Ding, 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 ding. Market escrow release. Oh. One of our buy orders drowned or something like that. It stopped. So, we have 10 million isk back. Now we're going to send it 17.9. Nothing compared to a billion. All right. Order the two to three hundred million we're going to be looking at to start our null sec, like to be able to move out there. Now that's not the only thing. You don't only need the money. What do you need to train for, as far as skills up here in our lovely skill set? As I'm training my drones a little bit currently up here in the drone category, I'm training my, training my scout drone operation up. Drones five is a great thing to have. Scout drone operation up there as well is another great thing to have and improves your range and can also give you access to tech two level drones. A big thing you need out in NullSec is the capacity to fly Tech 2 level items and ships. They won't often be flown. Most fleets are uh, flown with Tech 1 versions of ships, but there are many fleets that fly Tech 2, at least modules, if not ships. Now, Tech 2 items require a lot of level 5 skills. It takes a long time to train them. So I'm looking at Scoutron Operation. It's on 3. I think it took almost a day. It was like 20 hours to get to level 3, to level 4. Going to level five will be four, almost five days to get out there without any bonus implants or anything for us anyway. We'll talk about those as well probably in the next episode. Anyway, so what we're going to, we need to focus towards first is being able to make the ISK. Um, you need to have that buffer behind you. And through gaining that buffer, you also have to buy ships. I mean, you're probably going to make a decent bit of money. Um, in order to fly these level 4 missions, a lot of people fly them in either battleships or battle cruisers. And as we looked at the battleships, these aren't cheap. Look at 230 million isk. Um, let's see. The Apocalypse. Probably the Abaddon. Eh. Whether or not they'd be your best fit or not. I know a lot of people fly Galante Megathrons or Dominixes out in these battles. So I think the Amar Abaddon wouldn't be a bad choice, though it is a pricier choice. Looking like at 190 mil, not 230. My bad. Uh, Recently, battleship prices have not differed much. They've gone up a lot in the last two years. Um, it used to be you can get like an Armageddon for like, uh, I want to say like 60, 70 million esque. And uh, maybe you get like an Apocalypse for like 90. Uh, no, no, wrong. Maybe you get an Armageddon for like 120. An Apocalypse for like maybe 150. And like the Abaddon, you probably have to pay like 180 to 190 for it this was like two years ago they've gone up a good bit and they've all gotten really close to difference between getting an apocalypse and abaddon's four million um and the abaddon sorry the apocalypse and the armageddon and the abaddon's just like another 20 mil more it's not much there used to be like a 20 30 40 mil difference between all of them uh for all the races but the, since recent patches they've gotten more or less difficult to manufacture which changes the prices I mean, if you're making, if you're mining, you need to make so much money uh, building these ships in order for it to be profitable. So, thus, the market in action. Currently, we're training up medium energy turret to four. This will give us a little bit more damage out of medium turrets, which will be flying on cruisers. Now, another thing, once we get set up to be able to run these missions, just train them as you need them. Uh, there's a lot of things you can go through. Your tank, armor tanking. Um, this is preferred by PvP fleets uh, out in Nullsec. Especially for larger fleets, uh, they will run smaller fleets that take shield tanking, but I would be a little more for focused towards armor tanking. Uh, for these bonus, for these reasons, if you've not yet started a character, I would recommend starting either Amar or Galante, as they focus much more on armor tanking. Uh, Amar is a little more towards, but a lot of people, uh, a lot of alliances will generally fly a little bit more Galante ships, uh, predominantly the Dominic's, um, Dominic's battleship. 
Uh, I've heard of Naga Fleets, which is a Kaldari battle cruiser, which is shield fit. Um, these generally aren't very large fleets. Uh, not saying they're small by any means. Just saying they're not the multi-thousand player engagement battles. Those are almost almost always have caps or super caps involved uh, with the sub capital fleet, which actually makes up most of those numbers. Anywho, this has been a look. We are going to looking at skills. I hope to give you guys some more information in the coming times. Like I said, we're going to work on our tank. We're going to work on our guns. Uh, the better your gun skills, the more damage you can put out. I can pull up my little thing here. We're putting out 59.2 damage per second. Not much. Not very much at all. Uh, 28 is coming from these two turrets, which I can probably put on more turrets. Uh, we got one more turret slot, so I can put on one more turret. Uh, this really isn't P PvE fit, P player versus environment. This is a player versus player fit ship. Wouldn't take too much to change it up. We want play one, drop the micro auxiliary core, uh, put on some a certain specific spec to the pi uh, pirates or whatever we're fighting in the missions to their damage type. And I'll put on our remote armor repair and probably put capper charges up here. Add an extra turn, and then we'll see what we fill the other three slots with. Anywho, this this really isn't a PVE geared ship. We're we'll probably just run something until we get enough money in order to buy a cruiser and run with that. So, I wish you guys the best. Like I said, we're going to work on armor. This will increase our tank. This is our live ability. This is what keeps us alive. Gunnery. This is what's going to help. The fat higher we get our DPS up, the faster we'll be able to kill the rats. The faster we'll be able to run missions, the more money we'll be able to make at a time. Everything will run faster for us. Engineering is supporting. That helps it. Navigation has I mean, it has bonuses. You're definitely going to need some of those skills up for the null sec. But focus more on being able to run high-level missions or being able to salvage. Uh, that's totally more of a different gear set, and that really does gear, gear you towards null sec better. It's a riskier investment it's got a steeper learning curve if you start missioning you can still transition to salvaging that's fine you can even go back and forth between the two that's kind of what we're going to end up doing here but it will give you more experience like i said it's going to be harder to learn now this is our shields we don't have much for shields much at all uh rigging is even an important thing jury jury rigging and you might as well grab the rest of the rigging skills i don't think they're very expensive um you will find yourself at random times during the game spending just a ridiculous amount of money every now and then and just buying like 10 different skill books, which is absurd. And you might find yourself every now and then buying one skill book and you spent more money out than you've ever spent on skill books before, which is crazy. All right. So, Spatial Command, we're going to get our Mar Cruiser up higher. I'm um, looking at flying cruisers for a little bit at least. Specifically, I'm kind of leaning towards. Uh, where are our cruisers? A Mar Cruiser, since we're a Mar, it'll be a little easier work and already fly these ships as opposed to flying anyone else's. We'd have to train the skills for like 20 hours or something like that. I don't want to take that time. Anyway. I'm thinking about the Mauler. 4% bonus to armor resist will help us stay alive uh, in a little bit harder missions. And 5% bonus to damage, which would be nice. As opposed to the 5% bonus to medium energy turn rate of fire, which means we're going to be spewing up more ammunition, which would be a little more expensive. It's kind of a nitpick thing. Anyways, 10% reduction in medium energy activation cost will help with the capacitor use on that. I've checked them both. They have the same amount of turns, the same amount of slots. Um, the Mauler is a slightly better tank. It has slightly more armor. And... So I think we we're going to look at that. We're looking at, uh, we probably want to go to Jita maybe to buy one of these. Because it's $12 million out here. I mean, you can spend the $12 million, but that's convenience. As you see, it's already it's a $10 million at this other place, t 8 jumps away. So we'd rather just, uh, just how far are we from Jita here? Jita, 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 Jita. Set destination. We're 6 jumps from Jita. And you not guaranteed the best price, but you're guaranteed a decent price at least in Jita. And some items, it is the best price uh, to grab them in Jita just because the markets are clamoring back and forth so hard. So, we will see you guys later, and hopefully next time we see you, we might just have a mauler. We will see. Intend on seeing you guys tomorrow. Stay stay safe, and make some money. We'll get you up to NullSec eventually, alright? Thanks for stopping in, guys. Have a great rest of your day.